Hello, everyone. First of all, I want to thank the International Society for the Study of Information for inviting me to this exciting conference on the theoretical and foundational problems in information studies. The title of my contribution is Implementing Fuzzy Sets and Processing Fuzzy Logic Information by Molecules. The outline of my book. First, I will introduce fuzzy logic, which is a good model of human capability to compute with words. I will show that this power of fuzzy logic partly comes from the fact that the human nervous system is intrinsically fuzzy. Then I will describe some strategies to process fuzzy logic information by molecules. Finally, I will conclude by presenting some perspectives. Fuzzy logic is a good model of human capability to compute with words. Fuzzy logic has been defined as a rigorous logic of vague and approximate reason. Fuzzy logic is based on the theory of fuzzy sets, proposed by the engineer Dot Fizzade in 1965. A fuzzy set is different from a classical Boolean set because it breaks the law of excluded middle. In fact, an item may belong to a set and its complement at the same time. An element may belong to any set with the same or different degrees of membership. And the degree of membership of an element to a fuzzy set can be any real number included between zero and one. The degree of membership is the unit of fuzzy information called fit. It derives that fuzzy logic is an infinite value logic. Let us make an example of a fuzzy set. Let us consider the set of the days of the weekend. The classical description of this set will include only Saturday and Sunday. It means that the weekend starts at midnight on Friday and ends at midnight on Sunday. But this is not a realistic description of what we feel like the weekend. A fuzzy set gives a better description because it will also include Friday but with a different degree of membership with respect to Saturday and Sunday. Fuzzy sets can have different shapes. They can be sigmoidal, Gaussian, triangular, to side a few. How does fuzzy logic model the way we compute by words? Well, in fuzzy logic, any nonlinear cause and effect relationship is described by a fuzzy logic system. The construction of a fuzzy logic system requires three fundamental steps. First, the granulation of all the variables in fuzzy sets. The number, position, and shape of the fuzzy sets are context dependent. Second, the gradu graduation of all the variables. A word, often an adjective, labels every fuzzy set. Third, the relationships between input and output fuzzy sets are described through syllogistic statements of the type if, then, called fuzzy rules. The if part is the antecedent and involves the linguistic labels chosen for the input fuzzy sets. The then part is the consequent and involves the linguistic labels chosen for the output fuzzy sets. When we have multiple inputs, these are connected through the end or and not operators. Fuzzy rules may be provided by experts or can be extracted from numerical data. The main elements of any fuzzy logic systems are the fuzzy fire that transforms crisp numerical inputs in degrees of membership to the input fuzzy sets, the fuzzy inference engine based on the fuzzy rules, which activates output fuzzy sets, and the defalsifier that transforms the activated output fuzzy sets in crisp output values. The fuzzy logic system is a predictive tool or a decision support system for the particular phenomenon it describes. Why is fuzzy logic a good model of human capability to compute with words? In my view, because our human nervous system is intrinsically fuzzy. The human nervous system comprises three elements, the sensory system, the central nervous system, the effector system. 
The sensory system catches physical and chemical signals and transduces them into electrochemical signals that are sent to the brain through the spinal cord. Into the brain, such signals are integrated and processed. Information is generated and decisions are taken. The outputs of the cerebral computations are electrochemical commands sent to the components of the effector system, which are glands and muscles. Our sensory system is a collection of eight fuzzy fires that are the visual, olfactory, gustatory, auditory, tactile, proprioceptive, thermoreceptive, and nociceptive subsystems. The multiple information of any stimulus, that means its modality, intensity, time evolution, spatial distributions, is encoded hierarchically because any sensory subsystem has a hierarchical structure. At the lowest level, there is a collection of receptor proteins. At the upper level, there are receptor cells that contain several replicas of the receptor molecules. At the highest level, we have many copies of the receptor cells distributed adequately in space, often covering the tissue. The information regarding the modality of a stimulus is encoded at the molecular level. The information regarding the intensity and its time evolution is encoded at the cellular level. And finally, its spatial distribution is encoded at the tissue level. Let's make an example. Let us consider the visual system. At the molecular level, we have four types of photoreceptive proteins that have the same chromophore, the retina. Still, they differ in the position of their absorption bands into the visible because the proteins have different amino acid compositions. At the cellular level, we have four types of photoreceptive cells, three cones and one rod. And each type of cell contains many replicas of one specific photoreceptive protein. At the organ level, within our eyes, we have the retina, that is a tissue covered by a two-dimensional array of millions of replicas of the four types of photoreceptive cells. The cones are concentrated into the fovea, which is the center of the retina. The three types of photoreceptive proteins we have in the fovea allow us to distinguish the colors. The absorption spectra of the so-called blue, green, red proteins behave like three fuzzy sets they granulate the visible region. Light beams having distinct spectral compositions belong to the three molecular fuzzy sets at different degrees. As an example, I show you here the case of a pure green and pure red light. The modality of the signals is encoded as fuzzy information at the molecular level through the molecular fuzzy sets that work in parallel. Each photosensitive cell is like a cellular fuzzy set that encodes the intensity of a light stimulus and its time evolution. Within each cell, there are several copies of one specific photoreceptive protein. And the number of molecular receptors that are activated in a cell depends on the intensity of the stimulus. The intensity is encoded as degrees of membership of the stimulus to a cellular fuzzy set. It's encoded as fuzzy information at the cellular level. The information regarding the spatial distributions of the light stimulus is encoded at the tissue level because the sensory tissue has an array of sensory cells. The complete information of a light stimulus is represented, representable as a matrix of data reproducing the matrix of photoreceptive cells on the retina. And each term of this matrix will be the product of fuzzy information encoded at the molecular level time that encoded at the cellular level. And this product is a function of the photochemical quantum milled for the photoisomerization of retina and its absorption, absorbance at different wavelengths in the visible. How does a sensory subsystem extract only the essential features of any stimulus? Well, the ensemble of sensory cells collects the multiple information of a stimulus and it encodes this information in the values of graded membrane potentials. Then an architecture of affine neurons increases the appetite by highlighting the contrast of the features of the stimuli in space and time. 
every alpha neuron has a receptive field that works as a fuzzy set, encompassing specific receptor sets and partially overlap with adjacent alpha neurons. Alpha neurons encode information in trains of action potentials. And the action potentials generated by the alpha neurons are the ideal code for sending the information up to the brain. Within our brain, information is encoded as spatiotemporal patterns of activity of cortical neurons. The network of cortical neurons originates the neocortex. The neocortex is usually described as being arranged horizontally in six lamina and vertically in a hive of cylinders called cortical columns. Experimental evidence has demonstrated that the functional boundaries between cortical columns are not sharp or binary, but gradual or fuzzy. For instance, in the visual cortex, the area V2 that receives the columnar projections from area V1 is partitioned in uh, thick stripes, thin stripes, and interstripes. In these three types of compartments, color is not processed separately from other visual attributes, such as orientation, direction, motion, and size, as shown by the data on neural activity reported in this figure. The behavior depicted in this figure is fuzzy because the stripes vary continuously in their degree of tuning. The analysis of the human nervous system sparks new ideas for processing fuzzy logic from molecules. When a molecular compound exists in many conformers or it experiences distinct microenvironments, it's describable as a quantum mixed state. Uh, WI represent the weight of the I wave functions. The molecular system represented by rho can be used to encode fuzzy information. The weight, WI, is the degree of membership of the I state to the fuzzy sets represented by the ensemble of all possible wave functions. It's possible to determine the fuzzy entropy of these molecular fuzzy sets through this equation. H assumes any real value included between zero and one. If the compound exists in just one state, n is one, w is one, and h is zero. On the other hand, if the compound exists in n distinct states, which are equally probable, then wi is one over n, and h is one. Of course, there is an infinite number of other possibilities, which originate h values included between zero and one. The ensemble of n states constitutes a molecular fuzzy set. It's possible to process fuzzy logic information when physical or chemical inputs modify the weight values and hence modify the fuzzy entropy. The estimation of the weight values appearing in H can be accomplished by recording spectroscopic time resolved signals and fitting any transient signal through the maximum entropy method. The maximum entropy method fits a transient spectroscopic signal by using a polyexponential function. I show here an example. Uh, it's a photochromic compound that becomes color uh, when UV irradiated, but as it bleaches when the radiation is discontinued. The bleaching process is fitted by polyexponential functions. And here I show the distributions of kinetic constants that depends, uh, depend on the temperature. It's possible to process fuzzy logic, even in the cases we don't have time resolved techniques. What is required is to find a smooth analog input output relationships that can be employed to implement fuzzy logic systems after the granulation and graduation of all the variables and the formulation of fuzzy rules. The granulation of the physical chemical variables can be accomplished not only a posteriori through software but also a priori by mixing proper molecular compounds and imitating the structure or principle of every human sensory subsystem. For example, we have shown that the three retinals in the cones partition the visible spectral region in three fuzzy sets. This molecular granulation of the visible region confers humans the power of distinguishing colors. Such an approach has been applied to designing the system with three or more photochromic compounds, which has allowed to extend human vision to the UV region. In conclusion, fuzzy logic information can be encoded 
through mole molecules that exist in many microstates of conformers. Alternatively, it can be encoded by mixing properly chosen chemical compounds that are responsive to the same kind of stimulus. And the implementation of fancy logic at the molecular level allows the development of chemical artificial intelligence. In other words, we might expect to approach some performances of human intelligence by processing fuzzy logic at the molecular level. For more information, please have a look at these selected references, and I thank all of you for your attention.